Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. Tonight we are working on Module 6, Lesson Number 7, and the objective is, as it was yesterday, a mouthful. It is to model mixed numbers with units of hundreds, tens, ones, tenths, and hundredths in expanded form and on the place value chart. So we're going to go ahead and look at a few problems tonight. I think parts of three different problems tonight, since there are only three uh, problems here on your homework tonight and all their little subparts. And we'll try to get through um, an amount that will give you an opportunity to be successful with the rest of your homework. So let's take a look at one of the problems. Problem number one. It asks us to write a decimal number sentence to identify the total value of the number disks. Okay, well that seems pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at uh, 1B. First we have, looks like, four disks of 100 each. So that's, oh, sure enough, that's four hundreds. So let's see, what is four hundreds? Four hundreds, what is that worth? Let's see, I can write 400 pretty easily just like that. Awesome, there's 400. Let's take a look at our next collection of disks. Looks like we've got three of them, and each of them looks to be like it's one hundredth. One hundredth, one hundredth, one hundredth, three hundredths. Sure enough, in unit form, that's three hundredths. Now the question is, how do we write three hundredths? Let's see. Well, if we did it like this, if we did it like that, we'd have to think, oh, is that the hundredths place? No, that's not the hundredths place. The hundredths place is one further out. Is that hundredths? Yep, that's hundredths, right? Because this is tenths. This is hundredths. So there's three hundredths. And now that we're adding these two numbers together, we can just add all of the... Uh, we can add from right to left, basically, all the place values. Let's see. Are, do we have hundredths? We do. We have three hundredths. Do we have any tenths? No. Nope. No tenths. Do we have any ones? No. Nope. No ones. Do we have any tens? No. Nope. No tens. Do we have any hundreds? Yep. We've got four hundreds over here, right? So those four hundreds we need to get. So we'll write, go ahead, four hundreds right there. And so there's our sum, right? Four hundred and three hundredths. That's four hundred and three hundredths. Actually, it, oddly, it's just exactly how you would say it. You'd think we would say it if we sort of spelled it out in unit form. Four hundredths and three hundredths. Awesome. Let's take a look at another problem. Problem number two asks us to use the place value chart to answer the following questions. Express the value of the digit in unit form. Okay, fair enough. Let's take a look at uh, the first couple. I'm going to do two A and B, and then I'm going to leave you with the last couple. Let's see, the digit blank is in the hundreds place. Well, let's see, well, that's the hundredths place, close, tenths, ones, tens, hundreds. So the hundreds place looks like it's this eight. Okay, so I'm going to say the digit eight is in the hundreds place. It has a value of, well, it has a value of eight hundreds. If we're going to express that in unit form, right? Eight hundreds. Excellent. Let's take a look at the second question. The digit blank is in the tens place. Well, that's the tenths place, which is very close, but not the same. There's the tens place. It looks like the number two. It has a value of, well, two tens, right? Because we're just in units. Two tens. Awesome. I'm going to leave C and D for you now that I've modeled those couple. And I believe there's other questions, E, F, G, and H in number two, that I'm going to leave for you as well. And finally, let's take a look at one of our problems from number three. Number three asks us to do a fairly complicated task with some fairly simple numbers. It asks us to, to write each decimal as an equivalent fraction, okay, and then write each number in expanded form using both decimal and fractional not fraction notation. The first one has been done for you. So let's see what they do. They start with 14.23, right, and then they go ahead and they write it in fractional form. That's 14 and 23 hundredths. Okay, that's straightforward enough. But then they bust things out, right? They take each one, each place value, and express it as a fraction, as a multiplication sentence, right? So this is expanded form. So we had one ten, so one copy of ten, that's in parentheses. How many copies of one do we have? Uh, we had four copies of one, so that's right here, four copies of one. Then the next value is tenths. How many copies did we have? Oh, we had two. So two copies of a tenth. Awesome. And then the next value, place value spot would be the hundredths. How many copies there? Three copies. So three copies of a hundredth. Then they go ahead and they actually do that multiplication. One times ten is ten. Four times one is four. Two times one tenth is two tenths. Three times one hundredth is three hundredths. And then, huh, whew, 
they move on to decimal notation. And they do this exact same exercise all over again, except this time with decimals. So using decimals, actually our whole numbers are the same, so our tens are the same. We have one copy of 10 right here. We have four copies of one right there. But now we have the decimal version of a tenth, right? That's this. So we had two times one tenth and three times one hundredth over here. And then we again just do that multiplication. So one times ten is ten. Four times one is four. Two times one tenth is two tenths. And three times one hundredth is three hundredths. Okay, let's see if we can do that one on our own. Next problem they give us is 25.3. So that's 25 whole numbers, right? 25 whole units and 3 tenths, right? 3 tenths. Excellent. 25 and 3 tenths. Now, can we do that in fractional notation, right? Let's see. Let's look at each place value. First, we have 2 copies of 10. 2 copies of 10. Sorry, my multiplication is not great. Let's see, how about the ones place? Oh, we've got five copies of one. So five copies of one. Now the next fraction we have is the tenths place. We have three copies of tenths, right? So plus three copies of one tenth. Awesome, and now let's go ahead and do that multiplication. Two times 10 is 20, plus five times one is five, plus three times one tenth is three tenths. Awesome. And now let's do this very same exercise over here for decimal notation. And again, our whole units are going to be the same. So we have two times 10. We have five times one. And then in decimal form, we have three times one tenth, right? Because one tenth right here. In decimal form is there. So let's go ahead and do the math. Uh, 2 times 10 is 20 plus 5 times 1 is 5 plus 3 times 1 tenth is 3 tenths. 3 tenths. And now we've done it in decimal notation. Now there are a bunch more problems there in 3, but they all follow this exact same pattern. We are going to uh, write them in fractional form first, and then we are going to write them in expanded form using either fractional notation or decimal notation, okay? All right, well, I hope this gives you enough, uh, enough support so that you can get through tonight's homework, and I hope you join me again next time on Mr. Kung Has Problems.